What is up, guys? Dash here for episode 423 of Community Universe Mode, and we are live for Sacrifice. One last try. If this does not work out, then indeed we are going to postpone the show to tomorrow, and then I'll have to do Fusion on Tuesday, but hopefully, fingers crossed, pray to the Twitch Lords. I restarted my Xbox. The router's been restarted. Hopefully, that will be enough to get us through the day. What up, guys? What's up, more? And hopefully, I sound okay because the little, uh, like, little fuzzy, muffy part on the end of the mic fell off, and I lost it. So hopefully, I'm not like coming through raspy or weird or anything or too loud. Let me know if I am. I'll try and find it. But here we go, guys. We are live on the Sacrifice pre-show for some singles action to get us rolling. And I do not want to bite my tongue or jinx it, but it is looking okay. Maury, if you would pretty please post on the site for me that it's looking clear because everybody kind of scattered and left after I ended the stream and said we won't be doing it until tomorrow. <laughs> Gumble's not here. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Zach, all right? But guys, this is Kevin Silva, the Portuguese wrestling god, he calls himself. And this one-on-one -on -one matchup getting things rolling for us, stemming from these two coming into CMB together as a tag team. They were known as Kill Switch, but their run in CMB, their start was anything... But, you know, from smooth, taking loss after loss, and eventually Kevin Silva blamed Chris Sullivan, started blaming him, saying, you're the weak link, you're dragging us down, and eventually decided to dissolve the team and go out on his own. Ever since then, these two have been at each other's throats on Twitter, talking that mad trash back and forth. But tonight, they finally look to prove once and for all who really is the weak link and who's the better. As here now comes... Chris Sullivan. It's unfortunate because when these two were first signed at CMB, I really liked their dynamic. I liked their team. I liked their style, but just not able to coexist. Chris Sullivan is coming into this matchup with a bit of momentum for himself, winning a six-man tag team matchup a couple of weeks ago on Fusion. He, JT Fury and Flashy knocking off Kevin Silva, Seth Royce, and Ryan Riley. Yeah, Ryan Kent in action tonight, Zach. You should stick around. Later on the main card, that triple threat match, he's defending his light heavyweight title against Chris Diamond and Matt Devious. Of course, a lot of the stack from top to bottom is the pre-show. Four championship matches, the ultimate sacrifice match, and of course, kicking off the main card, Schmitty makes his CMB return. Locked inside of hell and a cell with the Barbarian Bison. We got a lot to get to on the pre-show. Of course, this matchup, then some tag action from Fusion between the Anarchists and Bannon and Bill Weaver. And then, of course, we crown a new Rising Star champion, guys. Matt Seo Yum, after his defense earlier this week against JT Fury on Reality Wrestling, has decided to cash in the title for a future shot at the United States Championship. Thus, we need a new champion crowned. RGP and Black Gale going to battle it out to see who takes the title. Hey, what up, Bateman, my, my love? The love of my life, welcome back. Hopefully we can get everybody back and hear more. Did you post on the site? If you did, bless you. Try to get everyone back in here. <laughs> Look at that, Chris Sullivan with a moonsault right out of the gate showing off his athleticism. These two guys with very different styles. Chris Sullivan, very uh, agile. A lot of moonsault to see from him. Springboard offense. But Kevin Silva is a very technical competitor. A lot of suplexes. Look at that fucking. Just hung up to dry on the top rope. And of course he likes to finish off his matches with that uh, that uh, dominable stretch of his. A very under underrated submission maneuver. Says that's what he's going to use to tap out Chris Sullivan here in this matchup. 
Yeah, Zach Payne finally back from getting lost outside. Nice counter right there by the Portuguese wrestling god. As now he brings Sullivan to a vertical base and already in the deep end is Sullivan captures suplex. Immediate pinfall attempt, will that be enough? Will this be a quick opener? No. Of course, we are live in the great north, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Randy Morton outside playing in the snow as Silva looks to wrap things up. A dominable stretch is cinched in, wrenching on that midsection, but Sullivan able to escape with a hip toss. And this match, I'm gonna keep going. That's now Sullivan immediately grabs a hold of Silva's arm, snapping it out of place, or looking to at least. Yeah, welcome back everybody. What up, Diamond? What up, Hellish? Combat, welcome, welcome, welcome all. We are still very active, Zach. Of course, our website, I don't know if you remember your account info, but your account is still there. It's cmvwrestling.com now. Exclamation point join in the chat. We'll give you a link. Reverse chin lock there. Held in by Solon. Gets enough stamina back in the tank to get off that springboard leg drop. Now a hook to the jaw from behind. Half Nelson backbreaker successfully executed. Now lining up the shot. And it could be Silva. Who's about to go night, night, final cut into the pin. This could do it. One, two, no, just a two count. These two fighting right now to prove who is the weak link, who's the better. <laughs> Welcome back, Topher. A neck crank being applied. Yeah, of course, Jacob Ziegler and Hayden later on in the main card defending those fusion tag team titles against the ATL. Hayden pulling double duty here tonight. As we know, in the main event, he'll be defending his world championship against King of the Ring winner Andrew Briggs. Guillotine on that top rope. Sullivan in control right now. Tries for another pin. Only a one count this time. Look to the jaw now from behind. Yeah, that hype video, or that little vignette rather, posted on the site earlier today was pretty dope. I feel like we all know what it means. Well, look at that. Implant buster. I love seeing those. You don't see them too often. Such a beautiful maneuver and hard hitting as well. And that might just be enough to bring home the win for Sullivan. Another half Nelson backbreaker. What up, Batman? Yes, we are live again, and I don't want to jinx it, but we're looking pretty clear. Into the pin. Welcome back, Hartline. Sullivan looking for that win, and he gets it! Chris Sullivan off a second half. Nelson backbreaker. Victorious here at Sacrifice. What a win for the rookie. Chris Sullivan knocks off Kevin Silva here on the pre-show. Proving that he was not the weak link. I don't know what you're talking about, Zach. You sound crazy right now, man. You're nuts. Well, there's what did a second half Nelson backbreaker by Chris Sullivan, sees him nab the win here at the Fusion exclusive pay per sacrifice. What a way to start off the show. Very excited is Sully. This kid could have a very bright future in CMV. Yeah, Big Show definitely going to get into that Hall of Fame one day. No doubt about it. Him and Zach Payne as a tag team, though.
Yes, Bateman uh, is correct. Our Twitter is official CMV underscore. If you would like to follow us for uh, updates, signings, match cards, all that good stuff. Of course, make sure you join our website also. Exclamation point. Join in the chat. We'll give you a link. CMVWrestling.com. Here we go. Now we're getting everybody back in here. Definitely don't want to miss out on what is going to be an action-packed main card, guys. Look at how it's getting underway with a hell of a cell match between Bison and the returning Schmitty. We've also got Damien, guys, and Shinaz and Doni. That might be actually one of the matches I'm most looking forward to on the main card, to be honest. That rubber match. But first, here on the pre-show, continuing with our first of two tag team matches tonight, the tag team titles. On the line later on, the main card, ATL challenging Ziegler and Aiden. But here it is, the Anarchist guys taking on Bannon and Billy Weaver as Crow and Bannon are going to start things off against each other. The Anarchists, of course, f former Fusion Tag Team Champions, they lost their titles two weeks ago to Jacob Ziegler and Hayden. They're definitely wanting that rematch, but first they got to get through Bannon and and Billy Weaver here, Bannon and Billy Weaver, who made their debut as a tag team last uh, month at Validation, knocking off another set of former tag team champions in Blood and Stone. We all know that Bannon and Weaver forced the team together, for if they do not, they'll be sent to prison. Johnny Sampson cutting the deal with the, with the, uh, I don't know, with the DA or the, I don't know, whoever he cut a deal with to make that stipulation so. So Bannon and Billy Weaver slowly but surely learning to work together as they do right there with a catapult. Cross body crow is taken down. Yeah, RGP versus Black Gale to crown a new rising star champion. That's up next, our last match on the uh, pre-show. That definitely has a making to be a great one. Right now, look at Crow. With a nasty kick, Crow and Caleb Reed most definitely in a foul mood after their championship reign lasted only a week. But of course, guys, it, would, it was announced earlier this week that the third annual CMV Tag Team Cup will be going down in three weeks' time, three weeks from tonight. Of course, uh, two weeks from tonight is the Genesis exclusive pay-per-view, the third annual Cyber Slam. It'll be the Sunday after that, guys. The Tag Team Cup returns. It is a Fusion exclusive event. The Tag Team Tournament that will feature eight teams from the Fusion roster competing. And the Tokyo Dome to go down in the history books. And of course, we know the team that wins the tournament that same night will get a crack at the Tag Team titles. You know, the first ever Tag Team Cup was won by Ryan Kent and Zach Payne. On that night, they won the Tag Team titles from T and Lee. And last year, Extreme Conditions won the Tag Team Cup. And they would go on to defeat Duo Maxwell to win the Tag Team titles on that same night. So, the odds are in the favor of the winners of the tournament itself. And look at, look at, look at, look at what winning the Tag Team Cup did for the team of Extreme Conditions. They went on to help, hold the titles for five months. They were voted Tag Team of the Year. And I actually can't announce for you guys that, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Crow! Look at the deal, some big time damage power bombing Weaver on the apron of the ring. Oh man, that hurt my back. But I was gonna say that uh, these two teams will be taking part in the third annual Tag Team Cup. The Anarchists and Bannon and Billy Weaver are among some of the teams announced. The others being the Ballers Club. Nice rocket kick by Crow. The Ballers Club is in there. The Pros. An interesting team by Johnny Sampson, uh, Chris Sullivan, and JT Fury among uh, what, what, what teams will remain. So, you know, with that news, both of these duos right here want to pick up that win for momentum. Bannon helping out Billy there. Now Weaver telling Crow to suck it. Yo, what up, gamer? Welcome into the stream for Sacrifice as Billy Weaver right now has Crow in a bad spot. That is not where you want to be against Weaver. Going to go for those firing elbows one after the other again and again and again. Racking that jaw with Crow using what little strength he has left to push Weaver off of him. Back into the center of the ring. Now a scoop slam attempted. Drops down behind. Billy Weaver going to push Crow off of him. Misses that hook horribly though. No one were even near where Crow's face was. Nice counter though. 
Oh, now Weaver lining up. Crow could be the end as we get some four-wheel drive. Into the pin, Caleb Reed distracting referee Murphy, trying to give Crow some time to recuperate here. Will it be enough? One, two, it will. Matchup will continue. The Anarchists, they're hungry. They're feeding to get a win and get back on track to reclaim those tag team titles. Of course, which team is going to head into the Tag Team Cup as champions? We find out later on tonight when the ATL challenged Jacob Ziegler and Hayden. Can Ziegler and Hayden work together to defend the titles? They managed to do so to win them two weeks ago. But defending them is going to be a different story. Up to the second turnbuckle. Here comes Caleb. Caleb hasn't even been tagged in yet, I don't think, guys. Crow. Oh, look at that, though. Helping out. Crow a little bit, but a hot tag. And here comes the Harbinger of Darkness. Crow is still on spaghetti legs as Bannon goes right over Billy but misses with the forearm smash. Now brought in off the apron. Crow taking on all comers right now. Just whooping ass. Nice little wrestling slam. Going to hover over. Some skills on his play there by Crow. Going to make a very smart... Oh, no. I thought he was going to tag in Caleb finally. Twisting leg drop. Going to connect flush. And now brought to a vertical base. And face to face they stand. Oh, single knee gut buster by the former Anarchy champion. Now Crow just looking down at Ben and almost with disgust in his eyes. Remember it was Crow and Caleb who came out to the ring on Fusion after losing their titles, saying they're still better than every team on Fusion. And Bannon, oh wait a minute, the Crow's Nest, the Crow's Nest. Weaver is still down. Can Crow get the win? No, only a two count. But the Anarchists came out to let everybody know that they're on the track to reclaim their titles. And Bannon and Billy Weaver, in between arguing with each other, would interrupt Crow and Caleb. Thus, this match was born. Crow, a second Crow's Nest. Says, hey, one didn't work. Let's try two. And it, oh my God. Wow, talk about a close pin. 2.99999. Weaver taken out by Caleb Reed. Bannon is in big time trouble, though. Never forget Jake Watson. Knee to the chest. Crow, though. Managing to pull off an arm drag, gets himself right back in the driver's seat, down and in a kneeling position, helping him up to a vertical base with a crack to the chest. Bannon, a former Anarchy champion as well. Wrapping his big meaty claw around Crow's throat. Weaver back out of the apron again as now Bannon lining up the shot and in big time trouble is Crow as we might get the healing touch right here. Yes, I believe it is. Just gonna drill Crow neck first right into the canvas. Bannon and Billy Weaver look to remain unbeaten and score another huge win over a pair of former tag team champions, but broken up is the pin by Caleb Beth Billy. Inadvertently, or maybe purposely taken out by Bannon right there. Bannon looks to keep the pressure on, rolls through, picking up Crow for an air raid siren. Neck breaker, putting the work on that neck and head. Irish Ripper in the corner. Maybe a tag here to Billy Weaver inbound. No, tries to, but Crow not having any of it. Instead, attempts a scoop slam. Drops down behind as the Harbinger of Darkness for a reverse DDT. Crow looks to stir, get over to his corner to tag, and Caleb Weaver looks out of it on the apron. Ooh, now a clothesline into the corner. Squash like a bug and crow right in front of Billy Weaver, knowing that Weaver could do nothing about it with referee Murphy watching closely. <laughs> Bannon wanting to make that hot tag, but Crow going to stop him. Very competitive back and forth tag match here. From behind, single knee gut buster again by Crow. He is... Really going to work on the ribs of Bannon. Is he finally going to make a tag? Yes. Caleb Reed finally legal. Nice and fresh as well. That is not good news for Bannon and Billy. Up to the second turnbuckle immediately. And Bannon is still recuperating from that single knee gut buster. 
Reed with a double axe handle right to the top of Bannon's head again. Bannon makes the hot tag, somehow just jumps right through Caleb. And here comes the hillbilly outlaw with a head full of steam, a fire under his ass, looking to bring it home. Brought to a vertical base and face to face they stand. From behind. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Once again, firing off those elbows back and forth, tip for tat. Hey, Xander Slate is currently one half of the World Tag Team Champions over on Genesis, a part of the uh, Click. Of course, this is a fusion exclusive pay per view. Caleb surviving the onslaught of those elbows. Now he has Billy Weaver in the corner, and I believe Reed might be trying for his little, uh, little vertical suplex. Top side of the corner, there it is. Expertly executed. Now looking for the tag. Maybe no, holding his head. Caleb does not look like he's in a great state. Letting out a mighty roar though. And the CMB Universe on their feet as the end could be nigh. Bannon is still down. And Weaver gonna get chopped in half with a nasty spear. And wow, Weaver just gets right back to his feet. Shoots right to tip Weaver no selling. That might have been the worst no-sell I've ever seen in CMB's history. And now Weaver has his eyes on the prize. Four-wheel drive. One, two, but Bannon says, nah, I don't really feel like getting another stop crow. Now Billy's like, you son of a bitch, you can get tagged in then. And <laughs> Caleb Reed just being put through the ringer. A four-wheel drive right into a healing touch. That has gift with Weaver can actually stop Crow. Wait a minute, Crow's out of it. He doesn't even see the pin. One, two, three. Bannon and Billy Weaver knock off another pair of former tag team champions this time and the former the anarchists here at sacrifice competitive tag team action very back and forth but bannon and billy weaver remaining unbeaten remember both of these teams in three weeks time will be in the Tag Team Cup, live from Tokyo, Japan. With a shot at the Tag Team titles on the line. Where's Jimmy Gimmick? The Harbinger of Darkness and the Hillbilly Outlaw once again working relatively well together putting their feelings for each other aside to score a big W. Hardline, you're bringing up some uh, some very bad memories for Bateman right now. Don't get him going on Leo Rush. All right. Oh shit, you know what? Rip in peace. Forgot to do this earlier. He, I believe he is. He's been making some like cryptic uh, tweets lately. Yeah, that tweet seems to have really ruined his career. Everybody jumped down his throat for that. I'm sure Bateman was uh, loving it. <laughs> I 
had to vacate the title. <laughs> Forgot to do that earlier. Good time. Oh, NXT TakeOver. <laughs> this has just become the dream. Should retitle it. Let's just let's just forget the blow off the paper you would sit here and talk about how much we all hate Leo Rush. Uh wait a minute. Entrance is on. Let's do that normal as well. I went to a wrestling school once. But then Ryan said that uh, his wrestling school was better than mine. So it just, you know, I just thought, damn, you're right. What's the, what's even the point? I will be going back eventually to be a commentator, though. I have decided. Going to go to wrestling school and do that. Me and my khakis aren't meant for in-ring competition, you know? guys here we go it is our final match of the pre-show before we kick things off truly with the main card in a big way hell in a cell bison versus the returning schmitty but first we crown ourselves a new cmb rising star champion as rgp takes on black gale of course it was earlier this week that Matteo, you retained his title against JT Fury in the main event of Reality Wrestling, and in doing so, made it uh, two defenses for himself, meaning he could cash in the title, and he decided to for a future crack at the United States title. And actually, I can confirm for you that that United States title match will be tomorrow night on Monday Night Fusion. Actually, on Tuesday will be Fusion. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, on the next Fusion, the fallout of Sacrifice, Matteo, you will battle whomever is United States champion. Of course, we find out later on in our co-main event, the ultimate sacrifice match. Welcome, Gumble. So with Yume cashing in the title, it has obviously now been vacated, and RGP was set to take on Yume for the championship here. Of course, remember, uh, Pullman defeated Yume a couple of weeks ago in a non-title match on Genesis. But with Yume deciding to cash in, RGP needed an opponent. And after Black Gale pinned Yume during a uh, live event after Genesis a couple of nights ago, Gale was slated, given the slot. And of course, remember Black Gale back at Validation defeated Yume via countout with the championship on the line, meaning that Yume retained. So Black Gale, a lot, a lot in the CMB universe been feeling that Gale deserved a rematch. And these are two very, very unique individuals about to collide here. RGP and Black Gale. I wouldn't really want to be trapped in a dark room with them. The music is playing. You guys can hear me good, right? Because like I said, I lost the little like muff thing that goes on the end of the mic. I lost it. So hopefully I don't sound like shit. Not too uh, loud or whatever. Oh, and here's a tweet, guys, from Matteo Yume that says, Don't stay outside of the ring for too long, Gail. You might lose the opportunity to raise your new trash title in the air. Well, actually, there is no champion's advantage in this matchup because there's no champion. So if either Gail or RGP win by countout, they will actually win the title. Here comes Black Gale, the man of... Oh, you know why? Because I fucking... Uh, I turned down my TV when I when I thought I wasn't going to stream today. My bad. It was on 30. But a man of many vices, a man of addiction. And I talked about how I think that's really why the CM Universe is so strongly behind Gale, because they can relate. He has his addictions, he has his problems, but he manages to fight through the pain and everything that's wrong with him to try to make a success out of himself. Well, there is what is on the line, the CMV Rising Star Championship. 
many Rising Star champions, uh, former Rising Star champions in action throughout tonight's show. We've got, you know, Josh Wolf, the first ever and two-time Rising Star champion. We'll be battling Travis King, Chris Diamond in action later on in our co-main event, competing for the late heavyweight title on that two out of three falls count anywhere match. But here we go. We are going to crown ourselves a new Rising Star champion as Black Gale going to push RGP into the corner and takes a cheap shot. Murphy warning him not to do that again. And this is Fusion versus Genesis. RGP, a Genesis superstar, Gale on Fusion, but the title can be defended anywhere on all shows. Feeling each other out early on. You can obviously see that RGP has the uh, height advantage, and I'd probably say strength advantage over Black Gale, but Gale very agile. Pullerman most definitely going to have to be weary of that blackout, the springboard forearm smash that Gale likes to finish off most of his matches with, or we might see down the sobering Whiskey River as well. RGP going to look for the eyes of Pullerman right now with a unique submission being applied. Has the knee against the, or the knee digging into the neck while also wrenching on the leg. Going to let go though. I guess just trying to wear down Gale a little bit rather than looking for a submission. Now a super click attempted super kick. It's a click. Click it, baby. And then a horribly botched fucking thigh slap. Stomped out onto the chest. Brought to a vertical base, and Roger Pullerman looks for a single underhook DDT. Pullerman lately been having a bit of beef with Eric Skarsgård over on Genesis, hoping that the Viking doesn't try to interfere here at all. Look at that ripcord knee strike early on, guys. This could already be over as Gale night night. No, only you know, one count. And remember, like I was talking about during the entrances, this matchup, if it ends by a count out or even a disqualification, I guess, we will have a new champion. Let's say RGP uses a chair against Gale and gets himself disqualified. Gale will win the title. Look at that beautifully executed corkscrew sent on. Picture perfect by RGP and not a frequent flyer either. I'm actually surprised that Roderick just pulled that off. Yep, the Cyborg Invitational this year will be the fourth annual Cyborg Invitational. It'll be a Genesis exclusive uh, event this time around. Last year's winner, Travis King, going to be in action later on in the show. Taking on Josh Wolf. Let's look at Gale with a nice combo. RGP getting back up to his feet. Gale is lying and waiting. Springboard. Oh, nice little springboard uh, lie detector. That's not, I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Impressive work by Gale now. An Irish whip and caught with a flapjack. RGP well scouted there by the Welshman. Now brought up into a seated position. One knee rebounds off the ropes and a oh, complete shot. Pulled off nicely. Pullman currently in control over Gale. Going to the corner and nothing pretty going to come out of this. Snake eyes on that top turnbuckle. Stomped down onto the arm now. Chest on the canvas, but Gale not done just yet. Arm drag going to bring Pullman overhead. Now a knife that's chopped going to bring him off his feet. Lighting his chest up like the 4th of July. Rebounding off the ropes and Black Gale spiking RGP with that Hurricane Rana DDT. Now Gale goes up high where he feels at home. Going to look to throw caution to the wind and take a big time risk. The question as always, will it pay off? We're about to find out. Beautiful code breaker. Mamma Mia. Beating the chest, that's out of Mighty Roar. Gale is feeling mighty good about himself right now. The Rising Star title on the line. Who's walking out of Toronto, Ontario with the gold? Looking for a power bomb right now is Gale. A buckle bomb to be exact. Doing some big time damage to that back. Now into his seated position. The Welshman is in a spot of trouble. Gale is all over him. Action roll though by Poleman. Runs right into a grapple. Gale taking him for a cheeky walk. And Gale now. Black Gale! Black Gale! Black Gale! Springboard European uppercut. He's finished matches with that before. Not going to go for the pin though. Instead to the apron. Black Gale looks to make sure the job is done. Beckoning RGP to rise to his feet. Gale soars through the air. Blackout! Blackout connects! 
into the pin. One, two, no. Only the two count. Black L thought he had it. Seems a bit shook, but that was not enough. But stand on top of things, making sure he stays in the driver's seat. Elbow drop and RGP busted wide open. Elbow to the midsection. Now Pullman has to go into overdrive. He's trying to keep his head above the water, but he's sinking. Maybe going for that triangle drop kick, but Gale saw it coming. Obviously did his homework. Gale might have his problems. He might have his issues, but he's no dummy. Now on one knee, and Black Gale with a pitch slap straight up. Hurricane Rana once again. RGP is in all sorts of trouble, man. He has got to do something to turn the tides. Otherwise, Gale, otherwise I should say Gale, is walking out. The new Rising Star champion only a two count pulled off of that pin attempt. Elbow to the midsection. And now Pullerman with a kick to the gut. Looks like a pump handle set up. Driver even. Oh, nasty maneuver. I think I heard... Gale's neck crunch from over here at the announce table. Lifting reverse DDT to follow that up. Some heavy hitting moves right now by RGP. Setting himself up for the win. Irish whip into the corner again. Maybe going to try for that modified triangle drop kick. Yes, he is. And it looks like this time he's going to get it. Hanging Gale up to dry. Out of the corner. Double boots to the temple. Oh, oh, oh. and now it is Gale. Who sees that the end is nigh? Pinball attempt, but just a two count. RGP arguing with referee Murphy. But the official's decision is final. That was only a two count. RGP says no matter. Let me try to finish things off picking Gale up. But Gale with a punch to the chest. Jawbreaker. Back and forth they go with the end. Just moments away. You can feel it. Who's going to have their hand raised? Pile driver by Gale. That could end careers. Oh no, Gale now with a GTS, but it doesn't stop there. The blood rushing down the forehead of RGP penalty kick. Nearly sending Pullman's head up into the cheap seats to the apron. Once again, the fans on their feet, ranting, raving, beckoning his Gale, calling for it a second time. Blackout connects. Grabs a hold of the leg. One, two, no! RGP unbeaten. Has yet to be pinned or submitted in his career and it doesn't look like it's happening tonight. But look at that face, donning that proverbial crimson mask. Gale is like a shark in the water. He smells that blood. Look at a pounce on the opportunity. Misses that drop kick. And that might be what costs him. As now RGP is lying in wait. Lining up the shot. Looks to bring home the gold. With the eyes of Pullman. But countered by Gale. Catches the leg. And a power bomb. RGP man just can't see it. Oh spinning back fist. Gonna send RGP into another dimension. Hook on the arms. Future shock. DDT. Gale's focus has 100% gone to the head. As for a third time, Gale retreats to the apron. Calls for RGP to get to his feet. And Trace with a blackout. Making sure that RGP does not get lucky with a rope break. Hooks the leg. Uno. Dos. Trace and Black Gale is the new Rising Star Champion. What a matchup to cap off the pre-show. It is RGP who takes his first loss, and it is Gale who is the new Rising Star Champion. Seemed like no matter what Pullman did, he could not get off his specialty maneuvers. Really a last ditch effort when he tried for the eyes of Pullman, but Gale was able to reverse it.
And there we have it. Black Gale is the new holder of the Rising Star Championship. What a match and well deserved too. It took three blackouts to keep down Polarman. I'm going to get copyrighted on YouTube for this song, by the way. <laughs> Every time Gail has a match, I get copyrighted on YouTube. Not that I care. Because Gail is the new champion. Oh yeah, Zach, do they have their own reality show? Friends like Robin Big. That's what I'd see them as. Here we go. It is main core time. Toronto, Ontario, Canada. We are in the Great North. Borton playing outside, making a snowman. What a pre-show that was. But things are truly about to get started in a big way. As the hell ring and Schmitty makes his return to CMV. Guys, what a card we have in store for you. There are four championships on the line. The tag team titles, the light heavyweight championship. We have the first ever ultimate sacrifice match in CMV coming at you. The United States title on the line in that, but a much more than that. And of course, in the main event, Hayden defends his CMV undisputed championship against King of the Ring winner, Andrew Briggs. We've also got Damian and Shanaz Andoni in their tiebreaker. The rubber match, I'm looking forward to that. And Travis King battling Josh Wolf as well. But first, to start things off, it is Bison the Barbarian, the OG monster of CMV, welcoming back Schmitty to CMV as they will be locked inside the Devil's Domain, Hell in a Cell. Johnny Sampson's welcoming back present for his uh, former son-in-law. 
We all know what Schmidt did last season, coming into Fusion, taking over, and just making the life of Johnny Sampson and his family a living hell. But it all came crumbling down around him at the top of this season when Johnny Sampson returned and revealed that tape of Schmidt cheating on Laura Sampson. Remember, Laura obviously breaking up with Schmidt and sending the game changer into a downward spiral. He disappeared for months and months and months until finally Laura, one day on an episode of Fusion, came to Johnny Sampson and begged begged her father said listen dad I'm having this baby and I need Schmitty to help me out you know I need child support I want him to be in the child's life so begrudgingly Johnny Sampson agreed to hire Schmitty back of course Ted Dickens had to go and find Schmitty he was gone nobody knew where he was but Ted Dickens tracked him down and he is back but Sampson said Schmitty, Schmitty can come back he can have his job but I'm punishing him. I'm going to make him pay for what he did to us, for what he did to the CMB universe. And I can't think of a better way to get some revenge than locking Schmitty inside of it. It's an inescapable structure with this man, the beast, the monster, the CMB veteran, the one and only Bison, who this past month has been on a tear. Sure, he returned at validation. He lost to Hayden, but these past couple of weeks, he has absolutely obliterated whoever's been put in front of him. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. He is back, the game changer, the former European, United States and world champion, former general manager of Monday Night Fusion. Schmitty has returned, and he said, I don't care who I'm locked inside hell in a cell with. For my child, for my boy, I'll do what I have to. I'll tame that beast. And this is far from the first time that these two have gone face to face. Schmitty made his CMB debut one year ago at Validation against Bison. They were the final two in the tug of war match, and Bison defeated Schmitty. And for months after that, Schmidt would talk about how he was going to bring Bison to court and sue him for wearing those horns. Of course, I'm not going to get my hopes up. We all know the issues I personally had with Schmidt last season. But look at that right out of the gate. Schmidt charges the beast. That was a mistake because he's taken down with a double axe handle. But Schmidt, again, I don't want to get my hopes up, but it seems like he might be a changed man. He's not as egotistical. Remember, I did that sit-down interview with him. I recapped it on Fusion a couple weeks ago. He is 100%. At least seems like he's 100%. He might be playing a game. He's the game changer after all, but he says it's all about his child. Now, he doesn't care about what happened you know, in the past. doesn't care about anything but supporting that child and being in that child's life. And if happened to go through Bison inside of Hell in a Cell is how he's got to do it, then he will do just that. As the former world champion has hands on the beast right now. Punch the top of the head. Blow back right there by Bison, who just a couple of nights ago on Fusion knocked off Andrew Briggs, the number one contender, the man who will challenge Hayden later on tonight in our main event for the world title. There's the wherewithal by Schmitty to roll out of the ring, catch a quick breather, but Bison's not going to allow him to get any rest. Look at Schmitty playing a game. Force some Bison to get back into the ring. Nice little back suplex as the season one veteran, the Two-time international and former world tag team champion just treating Schmitty like a piece of meat on a silver tray, like a, like a slab just put in front of him. Goes for the pin. First pinfall attempt of the match. Only a one count. I'm sure Bison trying to play with Schmitty there. I'm sure that Johnny Sampson told Bison, you destroy Schmitty. You beat the hell out of him. You obliterate him. You tear him apart before you defeat him. But even though I have my personal issues with Smitty, even though I'm not his biggest fan, he is one a hell of a competitor, and you can never underestimate him. He's a two-time United States champion, a former world champion. Look at Bison, though. Bison locking in the Campbell Clutch here. The Iron Maiden being applied, but Schmitty going to slip out of it, grabbing at Bison's ankles and dragging himself to safety. And now a reverse DDT by the Game Changer. Face to face, they stand. Schmidt just had a, just had quite 
A scare there as Bison locked in the iron. Made him wrong time to tar, maybe not. Schmitty with a couple of double forearms. Now a clothesline and a modified face buster to bring it all together. And it is Bison who's in a bit of trouble right now. I'm sure Johnny Sampson is on the edge of his seat watching closely with Laura Sampson backstage. Vintage Schmitty as he locks in the submission. Will he be the one to tap out? Bison, sleeper hold locked in, but not for long. The Beast escapes in a headbutt. Might have just broken Schmitty's nose. Slapping away the forearm, though. Are we going to get some old school Schmitty? It's been a while since I've called it. Look at this right here. Snap, man. A rolling next snap. And Schmitty, he is feeling it. He is happy to be back. Let's out a mighty roar. And it seems like he might have a little bit of fan support here. Bison tries for a belly to belly. Stalled, though. And a nice hip toss. Now Bison down on one knee. Schmitty going to take advantage. Forearm smash. Right up under the mask that caught him. And now the game changer. Now the expecting father. Lining up the shot. Kick to the gut. Oh, school. Schmitty. Will it be enough to tame the beast? One, two. It will not. Schmitty hoped and he prayed that that would do it. Looks a bit baffled. Looks a bit bamboozled that it did not. But that's Bison in the ring right there. That ain't no schmuck off the street. Ooh, elbow drop. Right to the chest. And of course, both these men have Hell in a Cell match experience. Both of them actually have been in one Hell in a Cell match each. Bison, way back when in season two, competed in an Armageddon Hell in a Cell. He actually lost his Intercontinental title in that matchup. And of course, Schmitty last year at Purgatory defeated Brody Sampson inside of Hell in a Cell. Look at this, Bison trying to mount a comeback, but Schmitty with another forearm smash. Seems to be going back to those frequently in this matchup. Arm drag by the Barbarian, cheeky little jab up against the ropes, and Bison gonna, oh, just drive his knee right into the gut of the game changer. Might have cracked a rib, and there's that shoulder club doom being applied especially when being utilized by a big man like Bison. And it just might be a matter of time for Schmitty. The clock is ticking. And Bison, Bison, Bison with the Iron Maiden again locked in. The Iron Maiden cinched in. Will Schmitty be embarrassed in his return? Will he be forced to tap? Will Johnny Sampson be smiling from ear to ear tonight? No. Bison lets go. The energy escaping him, but the damage might be done. Schmitty is incapacitated. Bison into the pin, and it's no! Talk about a close call. 2.999. Bison thought he had it, but Schmitty, Schmitty is still alive. And the game changer with the sleeper hold again. The body scissors too, but, but, wait. No, breaks the hold, separates the arms and another headbutt. Beating the chest, the behemoth, the rabbit animal. Oh, bear hug, spy buster. The entire ring quaking. Oh, and the horns right to the gut. Escapes the, no, no disqualifications inside of Hell in a Cell, remember, anything goes. Looks to crack the bat over the knees, break those kneecaps, but Schmitty recounters it, and it helps go Schmitty again. Catching Bison off guard, hooks that tree trunk of a leg. One, two, three, and Schmitty teams the beast. The game changer is back. And Johnny Simpson's plan to get retribution is thwarted. Schmitty defeats Bison inside of Hell in a Cell. What a close match. The greatest professional wrestler on the planet today is back. And he has got more reason than ever to win matches. That baby boy that's on the way. And how is Johnny Sampson going to react to this?
his plan, his grand scheme to make Schmitty suffer. I don't get me wrong, Schmitty got his ass kicked. That was a hard hitting bout. But Schmitty is back and he is victorious. The cell is raised and Schmitty is free. Well, like I said, how is Samson gonna react to this? Something tells me he's not just gonna be like, yeah, all right, you won, fair enough, welcome back. What's next for Schmitty? Mamma mia. <clears throat> Guacamole. What an opening matchup that was. Certainly a tell of what to expect from the rest of the night as we go from one beast <clears throat> to another. But Damien, unlike Bison, not looking to take the L tonight as the Gargoyle of Destruction instead looks to take back the win that was given away to Shinaz some weeks ago. Currently standing at 17-1 and one is Damien. And that one is thanks to that man right there. With the glimmering smile and the missing tooth. The real number one Bubba. The first man to pin and defeat Damien two weeks ago. Now we're getting the rubber match. Damien wants to prove that it was just a fluke. And to be fair, to give some credit where credit is due, Shanaz did use underhanded tactics to defeat Dave. You remember, during the matchup, Shanaz had pre-recorded footage uh, earlier in the night and then played it on the Titantron, distracted Damien. And that gave Andoni the opening to defeat the Gargoyle of Destruction. But remember their first encounter back at Validation, Damien defeated Andoni in under one minute. I have never seen Damien more pissed off than he is now. He absolutely wreaked havoc earlier this week on Fusion. And also earlier tonight during the pre-show, don't go to the parking lot. They're still cleaning it up. Glass shattered everywhere. Cars turned. Luckily, my car is okay. But Damien flipping cars on it on their side, attacking personnel, attacked our new interviewer. He is in a foul mood and looking to make Andoni pay here tonight. Uh, no, Chrissy. So I'm, I'm right after the show's over. I'm hopping on a train and going to Manhattan to watch the Super Bowl. Damien looking more eerie and creepy than ever. The gargoyle of destruction man, truly one of a kind. One of the most impressive records in CMB history. And today, 17 and 1. Well, look at this. <laughs> How can you not love him? How is it possible to hate the real number one Bubba in his Aladdin aspired attire? Well, remember what happened last time he was in that attire, though. It didn't really go too great for him. You might not think it by looking at him, but one of the most decorated 
superstars in CMB history, a two-time world tag team champion, longest reigning tag team champion of all time, a two-time light heavyweight champion, a former fusion tag team champion, and a two-time anarchy champion. Will Shanaz Andoni pull off another huge upset? Or will this be a short trip to Toronto for the Punjabi playboy? <clears throat> well, you were still around when that record got broken, Zach. <clears throat> Hashtag trending worldwide hold the record. For longer shredding world tag team champions of all time. Shanaz Andoni and Chet Taylor. Seven months. They held the titles. Hopefully Antoni doesn't bring any more. <clears throat> any more little shenanigans to try to knock off Damien here. Antoni is more than skilled to defeat Damien on his own. Without any little sneaky snacky tactics. But to be fair, I think that might be the only way that Damien can be defeated is by, you know, playing tricks on him, by messing with him. But here we go. Referee Murphy rings the bell and bursting out of the gate like, a, like an enclosed bull. But I'm trying to right into a neck breaker, gyrate in the hips, and Doty getting things on the, the right foot, starting off how it should, but Damien ruins the fun quickly with a choke bomb and if Shanaz gets hit with that virus slam it is all over nobody of Damien's 17 victims has kicked out of that virus slam it is quote me the deadliest maneuver in CMB today punch to the gut the real number one bubba well I'll, I'll give Antoni credit he's already faring better than he did at validation Oh, but I spoke too soon! No! Damien! 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 Virus slam! Hooks the leg! One! Two! Dirt! He did it! Shanaz did it! He kicked out! Just as I say it! And Donnie becomes the first man ever to kick out of the virus slam! Holy shit! The real number one Baba surviving the deadliest weapon in Damien's arsenal. And now Antoni with a double hit. <laughs> Bulldog and Shanaz. Shanazing up, baby. The fans on their feet. The Punjabi Playboy. Gonna catch Damien with a spine buster, and it wouldn't be complete without a little pelvic thrust. Retreating to the corner. Damien has never felt this way before. And Tony's about to have his number again. No, but the gargoyle of destruction doesn't allow the good times to last forever. Digging the boots into the chest, and a forearm smash gonna ring the bell of Shanaz and Tony. The CMB veteran now being taken overhead, but nope, drops down behind, reverse DDT. Will Damien be upset once again? Will it be 17-2, winding uppercut? That fist gonna crack the jaw, and look at Adoni feeling mighty good about himself right now, as he should, as that knee begins to jerk, and Damien gets to his feet, catch shots out, deflected, sidestep, and a headbutt by the big man, but walks into a snapmare. Elbow to the face. Damien now closes the distance. Goes for a hook to the jaw. Maybe trying for another virus slam. But Antoni sees it coming instead of second winding uppercut. That took it out of Shanaz. Down on one knee. Perhaps just out of instinct. Flops into the pin. Almost collapsing into the cover. But that'll be a one, not even a one count. I don't believe that was a rope break. Antoni dragging the 300 plus pound frame of Damien away from the ropes and the worm not a proper worm oh mamacita I think Shanaz was thinking about it for a second 
instead gonna pull off a leg drop to the arm. Maybe gonna try to wound, like, to try to wound that arm, you know, enough so that Damian can't use it to pull off a choke slam or or a virus slam. As Antoni right there was looking for something, but he's gonna have to look elsewhere. Counter for counter, tip for tat. Just decides to do a jumping jack to Shinaz. Wrong time to exercise. Damien gonna make him pay. Guillotine on that top rope, making it impossible to breathe. And there's the blood mist from the mouth that usually signals that the end is nigh. Holding his boot to the gut of Shinaz. But Antoni's not done. European uppercut, the CMV veteran. Punch, punch. Oh, the wave! Cracking Damien again in the jaw. And Tony's having the time of his life. What a match this has been complete, uh, unlike their past two encounters. When Damien defeated Shanaz at Validation, it was a squash. And then when Shanaz defeated Damien, it was largely all Antoni. Now it's back and forth. Now there's close calls. Now anything can happen. As Damien just stomping on the back of Shanaz's head, trying to cave it in. You're a Nagi slam. Surprising to put Shanaz through the mat as now the gargoyle of destruction once again with the virus slam. He kicked out of it once. There's no way he could do it twice. Uno, dos. Uh, are, 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 you, are you kidding? Shanaz kicks out of a second virus slam. And Damien's like, he's baffled. He can't believe it! And Tony! Not just once, but twice! Kicking out of the virus slam! But Antoni can't just spend his night kicking out! He's actually gonna try to put the big man down some way! Somehow! But no! Damien says enough! And for the third time, a virus slam. Make sure that Antoni doesn't get a limb under the bottom rope, hooks the leg. One, two, three. 18 and one. Damien avenges his loss to the Punjabi playboy. What a matchup that was. Look at the jumping jack. Great replay. Damien proves that two weeks ago was a fluke. Taking nothing away from Antonio. What a performance. Kicking out of two virus slams. Nobody has ever even kicked out of one. But now Damien sits at 18 and one, and who's his next victim? Who's next? All right, now, my fine feathered friends, it is time for our final matchup before we get into our title bouts, our four championship matches of the night. Travis King, the perfect specimen set to take on the vessel of Fenrir. Josh Wolf, a pivotal battle here in the waging war between Click and the Resistance. Josh Wolf brings the battle to the fusion front here live in Toronto, Ontario for sacrifice. Ever since Josh Wolf showed up at validation and threw down the gauntlet, 
Travis King has had his number on three separate occasions. Travis King has stood tall over a downed Josh Wolf. But will tonight be different? Will tonight be the night that Josh Wolf gets a big win for he and his resistance brethren against the growing influence what Josh Wolf would call a cancer, what Travis King called a cure, click. The former world champion, the third annual Cyborg Invitational winner, Travis King, the fusion representative of Click, marches his way towards the ring. Josh Wolf said that tonight there will be a sacrifice. Travis King's soul to Fenrir. And this is without a shadow of a doubt. Josh Wolf's biggest match in his CMV career. He's the inaugural Rising Star Champion, a two-time Rising Star Champion. He's battled the likes of Bob Luger and Randy Borton, but this is a huge opportunity for Wolf. Live on pay-per-view to defeat a former world champion and take out a member of Click. No, Borton is on Genesis. This is a fusion exclusive pay-per-view. Of course, Josh Wolf is a member of the Genesis roster, but back at Exodus, he was suspended by general manager Castle Fave after going on a rampage and attacking backstage employees again. But Josh Wolf said, I'm not going to sit around with my thumb up my ass for, you know, two, three months. I'm going to do something. So decided to come over here to fusion and continue the fight, continue the battle. And there he is, the vessel of Fenrir. Josh Wolf. Yeah, but the difference is, Topher, that I don't think Johnny Sampson, I think he's smarter than to go up to Damien and say, hey, man, can you not do that? Josh Wolf was warned multiple times by Castle Fave before he was finally suspended. But there he is. Josh Wolf knows that this is a big moment for himself, for the resistance, for the CMV universe. <laughs> How is Josh Wolf gonna fare against the bigger, the stronger Travis King? Like I said, three times Travis King has had the better of Josh Wolf. Tonight they finally meet face to face in the ring. Here we go, Travis King, the perfect specimen, the vessel of Fenrir, Josh Wolf, Murphy rings that bell, and here we go, the click versus the resistance again. And right out of the gate, King with a back suplex, not a fantastic start for Josh Wolf here at Sacrifice, and now a single arm back body drop. Josh Wolf, we know that in situations like this, you know, in big fight feels, he digs down DP channels Fenrir to come out to unleash. Really saw it for the first time back at Ascendance when he defeated or rather lost to Kevin Lee, but then came back and remember beat Pat Lefave at Battle Scars. Josh Wolf certainly had changed man. Not, not even not even reminiscent of who he was when he first arrived in CMV. Now they're starting to feel each other out a little bit. Side headlock, but Travis... Oh, oh, no, a knee. I thought Travis King was going to get out of it. I don't know how it's legal for Josh Wolf to be rocking those steel chains around his wrist, but hey, this is CMB. Pop-up drop kick. Looks like I just popped open the textbook and came flying out at me. 
perfect execution now a knee to the jaw again the knees on display by Wolf early on and this encounter but a European uppercut by the perfect specimen then a crack to the jaw four on smash another crack to the jaw spinning back this headbutt what a combo Wolf is out of it maybe not for long gut wrench gonna take Travis King down short arm shoulder block stop now down onto the arm last season man Travis King was the most dominant superstar only with one defeat that came at the hands of Harvey Hastings winning the third annual Cyborg Invitational and capturing the world championship at Purgatory by defeating Chris Sanchez of course that all came crashing down at the hands of Schmitty who stripped Travis King of the title fired him and then beat the hell out of him Travis King only got his job back thanks to Johnny Sampson but since the start of this season man King's been taking a lot of losses mostly at the hands of Paul Devine Ooh, this would be a nice a nice win here for King to finally set himself back on track now with the support of Click behind him Josh Wolf though targeting that knee drop kick gonna collapse him now brings him to a vertical base hooks to the jaw Irish whip into the corner the inaugural rising star champion to get a good look at that ass forearm smash lower back and again now going to put Travis King up high and not a place that you want to be. Inverted suplex by Josh Wolf from the top. How about that? Turning the tides most definitely as now Wolf looks to capitalize. Instead gets a jawbreaker. Travis King with a European uppercut. Josh Wolf though with some smarts to roar to the apron. Going to use the ropes to pull himself back up to his feet. And Travis King turning to the crowd and mocking them. He knows that they're 100% behind Josh Wolf here. Shoulder thrust Wolf collapsing down to the outside as Travis King on the apron. What the hell is he looking for here? Nothing pretty, I assure you. Dives off of the apron, misses the clothesline though. What a botch that was. Back suplex on the outside where the hard concrete lies beneath that thin padding. Travis King not done either. Oh no, no my god! Just wastelanding Wolf right on the announce table over here. Now back into the ring. And Wolf's spine might be shattered into a million little pieces right now. Or maybe not. You can never count out Josh Wolf. Snap married a kick to the back, but that just pissed Travis King off. And now Wolf gonna get a tour of the islands. <laughs> the cell not strong with Wolf though as he bites his tongue fights through the pain takes it with a pinch of salt shoots in for something I'm not sure what whatever he tried for though that's a terrible time to taunt Josh Wolf trying to unleash Fenrir instead got a forearm smash that would crumble any normal man lucky rope break for Josh now as Wolf Works off the seated position with a neck crank. Joshua, if you see him trying to scratch at Travis King's forearms to make him let go. King now taking a look around, scanning the crowd, takes a deep breath and an elbow drop. Obviously softening up Wolf for the inevitable end that he has planned. Alley-oop. Oh man, the landing right there was not soft for Josh Wolf. Travis King currently having his way with the vessel of Fenrir. A second tour of the islands. Wolf says, no, thank you. I already seen him. Now shoots in. Wolf, we don't see him hit this often. What a combo. Nice clothesline to chop down the perfect specimen. Wolf turns to the audience. Beats his chest. Roars. Echoing throughout the arena. Now closing in. Misses a stop. King to his seat. Irish whip. Josh goes for a run into the corner. Slowly approaches. It. No. 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 Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Travis King looks to deal. Incredible damage. Maybe end Joshua's career. Superplex. To the outside of the ring. From the top rope. The fans chanting. This is awesome. More like this is gruesome. And King says, 
that he's broken, Wolf. Josh just now beginning to stir slightly. Put a boot up under the chin. All the damage that Wolf has endured as now King is busted open with a precision DDT on the outside. Murphy currently at a count of five. This is a standard singles matchup, so these two have to be careful of the count. Man, I can't imagine what kind of pain Josh Wolf's back is in right now. Travis King has made that a target. But now Wolf brings the fight back into the squared circle. Again, lets the CM Universe know that he's okay. And now, and now Josh Wolf looks for retribution on the hunt. Hooks that leg. One, two, three, and Josh Wolf defeats Travis King here at Sacrifice. It wasn't easy. Wolf put through the ringer. I don't know if his back will ever be the same. But Wolf with a pivotal win for the resistance against Click here tonight. My God, man. Travis King absolutely dissected that back, but Wolf endured it. He fought through the agony. And now stands tall over his enemy. And now, my friends, we get into championship territory from here on out for a sacrifice. It is all about titles. And our first of four championship bouts going to bring us the ATL challenging Jacob Ziegler and Hayden for the Fusion Tag Team titles. But first here, a tweet from Josh Wolf says, Blood has been spilled. Fenrir has feasted upon another god. But this, guys, is definitely going to be a very interesting matchup to watch because Ziegler and Hayden were barely able to work together in order to win the Fusion Tag Team titles two weeks ago when they defeated the Anarchists. Will they be able to coexist in order to defend them against a very game-aggressive ATL? Malcolm Fry and Deshaun Porter have yet to be pinned as a tag team. They did lose via countout a couple of weeks ago to Blood and Stone, and Deshaun did take a singles defeat at the hands of Ziegler earlier this week on Fusion. But as a team, the ATL are a well-oiled machine. There's no other. They are magnificent. One of the fastest rising teams in CMB today. And looking to make the Fusion Tag Team Division theirs by becoming the Tag Team Champions here tonight. And of course, this is Hayden's first of toll in that double duty as in the main event, he defends his World Championship against King of the Ring winner, Andrew Briggs. We've still got after this the first to two falls count anywhere match for the light heavyweight title. Chris Diamond and Matt Devi is seeking to win the gold as Ryan Kent defends. And of course, four men enter that 16-foot Black Steel Cage, the ultimate sacrifice match. And as the ATL look to make their entrance here, guys, at Sacrifice, we have breaking news. Black Gale has been escorted out of the arena by medical and security personnel. See the video for more information. 
So Black Gale, of course, earlier tonight on the uh, pre-show, defeated RGP to become the new Rising Star champion, has now been escorted. Apparently, there is an exclusive video on our website, cmbwrestling.com, exclamation point, join in the chat. We'll give you a link if you want to see that. But here they are, the ATL. They're a long way from home here in Toronto, Ontario. But tonight, they look to become the Fusion Tag Team Champions. Deshaun Porter and Malcolm Fry. They have what Ziegler and Hayden don't. They have chemistry. They're like brothers. They know each other like the back of their own hands. Ziegler and Hayden just incredibly phenomenal competitors on their own. And maybe if they were on the same page, they would be one hell of a team. But the fact of the matter is that they hate each other. Johnny Sampson, having beef with both Ziegler and Hayden, decided to kill two birds with one stone by putting them together. And there he is, the pride of Scotland, the current Mr. Money in the Bank. He has that contract in hand. He can cash in anytime, anywhere for a world championship match. And who is the world champion? None other than his partner, Hayden. And a tweet here, guys, from Matt Devious says, there are many ballers and many champions, but there is only one antagonist of this story. Remember that. Jacob Ziegler, a former two-time Anarchy champion, and now one half of the tag team champions. It's a bigger paycheck for Ziegler, toting that gold around. And that's, of course, what he and Hayden care about. They care about paychecks. So you know they're going to work together as much as they have to in order to retain the gold. As now here comes the current CMV undisputed champion in his fourth reign, the A-lister on his own level, the one and only hated. And I got to know that the King of the Ring winner, Andrew Briggs, is thrilled, absolutely ecstatic about this. Because later on tonight in the main event, Hayden has to defend his undisputed title against Briggs. So Hayden is not going to be fresh. You know that Kitely is going to be looking to finish this match off as quickly as he can in order to be as fresh as possible heading into the main event. But that's not really up to him. <laughs> now I'm getting excited for that Zach Payne return, you know? I wonder about how Hayden would feel about Zach Payne returning. I think he'd say something to the effect of, you're not on my level. Look how Hayden went to the same turnbuckle that Ziegler did. Almost like, bitch, this is my ring. This is my corner. This is my turnbuckle. These are my fans. Hayden keeping his undisputed championship safe in the back. As we get set for tag team action. Remember, it was announced earlier this week, and I touched on it earlier tonight, that the third annual CMB Tag Team Cup, live from Tokyo, Japan, the Tokyo Dome, will go down in three weeks' time. So the winners here, whomever walked out as Tag Team Champions tonight, will defend the titles at that very event against whichever team, of course, wins the cup itself. <clears throat> There's what is on the line, the prestigious CMV Fusion Tag Team titles. The challengers, two Atlanta boys. That's Deshaun Porter on the left and Malcolm Fry on the right. Together they form the unbeaten ATL, unbeaten via pitfall submission. Like I said, they did take that count out loss some weeks ago. 
But these two men, man, they have quickly become my favorite tag team on the Fusion roster. Can they win the big one? In order to do so, they have to beat two of the biggest stars in CMB's history, the stars of the A show. The undisputed champion Hayden on the left, and of course, Mr. Money in the Bank, the pride of Scotland, Jacob Ziegler on the right. They're not friends, but in fact, they are enemies. But together they are the tag team champions, and they're both pretty thrilled about it. <clears throat> Referee Murphy gonna and hold them up high for all to see. And a tweet here, guys, from Josh Wolf says, not a fan of their mouths, but I'm loyal to my home. Take them down, ATL. And Josh Wolf, also a Atlanta boy. Just saw him knock off Travis King in the last match. It's going to be Malcolm Fry and Jacob Ziegler starting things off. And Ziegler with a little bit of a stalling suplex to get things underway. And that's one way to get the ball rolling. Now a seated position. Like I said, Ziegler earlier this week on Fusion actually had a pretty fantastic singles match against Deshaun Porter and was able to get the victory. A little bit of momentum for he and Hayden. Kicking out the knee, though, and Malcolm Fry with the Northern Lights suplex. Malcolm Fry all about those suplexes. You'll see various types, you know, vertical, gut wrench, anything you can possibly imagine. Malcolm has mastered the art of the suplex. Jacob Ziegler bouncing out of the corner there, but now a hip toss after a clap to the temples and a stomp to the midsection. Pride of Scotland going to dig his knee right in the back of Malcolm Fry's head and taunt and mocking the ATL on their fans. Josh Wolf most definitely is right about one thing. The ATL have quite a mouth, and they like to run it on Twitter. Constantly talking that trash to anybody who uh, rubs them the wrong way. Now an Irish Ripper to the corner, and an early tag to Hayden. The world champ, what the hell are these two guys doing? Double arm wrench, double kick to the gut, and double kick to the back. T teamwork by the stars of the A show. I can't believe I'm seeing that. That was like... That was super fluid as well. Maybe they had a little bit of a talk with each other before the show and said, hey, I know we ain't the best of friends, but let's go out there. Let's do what we got to do. Let's work together in order to make sure that these titles stay ours. And a tweet here, guys, from Chris Diamond says, there may be many ballers, but I'm the king of them, baby. Tonight is the night the baller walks out as the new light heavyweight champion. That, that matchup is up next. Hayden with an arm wrench. Going to go for a pin here over Malcolm Fry. Lateral press as he digs his hand right into Fry's mouth with just a one count. Grabbing by the hair in his head. Brings him to a vertical base. Able to counter though. And Fry with a punch to the chest. Now a hook to the jaw and a half and half suplex. Throws him right overhead. Face to face. Crack to the jaw again. And a hero slam by Malcolm Fry. And now Hayden is starting to get pushed into the deep end as Malcolm Irish swoops into the corner of the ATL and a tag into Sean Porter. We could be closing in on new Fusion Tag Team Champions. There's that high knee and Ziguri combo. Now to Sean Porter with the most beautiful Northern Lights suplex I have ever laid my eyes on. One, two, but only a two count. Man, and it wouldn't just be the ATL knocking off the stars of the A-Show to win the titles. Imagine if Porter or Malcolm can pin Hayden, the world champion. Double-handed bulldog by Kitely. Now stomping on the lower spine, grabbing a hold of the head and trying to crack open that coconut. And here's the aggressive side of Hayden through and through. Now, you know, Kitely very well-rounded in other areas, but most definitely is one hell of a brawler. You do not want to get in a fist fight with the world champion. Rake of the eyes right there. Dirty heel tactics. I wouldn't be surprised any four of these guys in this matchup using those underhanded, you know, ways to try to win this matchup. Hayden, though, with a nice counter into a power bomb. Now an Irish over to the corner. And I think we're about to get vintage Hayden because justice is served for Deshaun Porter. Look at those fists fly. 
Man, in another life, Hayden would have been one hell of a boxer. Another corner now. It's Deshaun Porter who looks to pull off the O'Connor roll. German suplex popping through, no bridge. Not looking for the pin. Instead, Porter perhaps going to try to put Hayden in the corner and look for another tag team finisher. Watch out, referee Murphy. Yes, the tag to Malcolm Fry. And Jacob Ziegler, guys, might have to play rescue. Once again with the high knee and Zaguri combo. Malcolm Fry this time. Going to look to bring it home with the Northern Lights suplex. The tag team expertise proving too much for Hayden to handle, but Ziegler does make the save. Porter not happy about that. Looks to take out the Scotsman with a front headlock. Murphy distracted. Doesn't see Fry looking for the pin. Now it might be too late. One, just a one count. Jacob Ziegler breaking a full Nelson attempt by the Sean Porter all-out war here between these four refs. Oh, Hayden, 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 Hayden! Hollywood hold, Hollywood hold! But Malcolm Fry rolls out of it. Fry survives. Perhaps the most devastating submission maneuver in CMB history. During all the commotion that was going on, T-Bone suplex into the corner. Man, Hayden's got to make a tag to Jacob Ziegler. Look to do so right there. Malcolm Fry cutting him off, though. Lateral press. Looking to catch Fry off guard here is the undisputed world champion, but only a two count. And now Hayden looks for a very smart tag, but at the same time, Malcolm Fry makes a hot tag to Deshaun Porter. Here we go. Who's going to get it off first, boys? Let's get it popping. Tag team titles on the line here at Sacrifice. Drops down behind. Does the pride of Scotland hammer fist to the back of the head. Goes for a hook to the jaw. Rematch from earlier this week on Monday Night Fusion. Back and forth they go. Tip for tower. Reversal fest ensuing. It's 1999 up in here, boys. Forearm smash. Yes, Jesus Christ. Who's going to get the fucking advantage here? Just reversing for days. But now it's Ziegler. Ziegler with the cross face. But that'll be an automatic rope break. Poor positioning on Ziegler's part right there. Oh, but now Ziegler to the corner. Ziegler to the corner. Tuning up the band. Looks for the Claymore. But misses it. Deshaun Porter sees it coming. Moving out of the way just in the nick of time. Unfortunately for him, not able to capitalize on the opening that was created. Once more with the stalling suplex, letting the blood rush to the head before dropping him to the canvas like a sack of stone. Knee gonna dig into the chest. Not just one, not just two, not just three, but four. Dealing some massive damage. As now Deshaun Porter getting dragged over back to the corner. Maybe gonna try for a tag to Hayden. Yes, here comes the A-lister. And <laughs> Hayden immediately playing some games, taunting the ATL. Ah, but that time that he wasted, Malcolm Fry on the apron watching Deshaun Porter uses to recuperate into the pin. He goes, but that's going to be an easy breakup for Jacob Ziegler to make. And Deshaun not too happy about that. Going to send Ziegler tumbling to the outside with a crack to the jaw. Now this puts Kitely in a handicap situation. Oh, as Porter might be closing in on winning those tag team titles. O'Connor roll German. This time the bridge is in effect, but breaks that bridge, does the Scotsman. And before Malcolm Fry can come and beat him up, Ziegler retreats to the apron. Malcolm Fry back to his corner. Deshaun pissed again. Knocks Ziegler down to the outside, and the opening is right there. All Deshaun Porter has to do is grab it. Blue Thunder Bomb! New champs! One, two, no! Kitely. At 2.999, able to kick out. Keep this match going. But now Malcolm Fry, the legal man, and a hero slam immediately keeps the pressure on. Hayden has got to make a tag to Ziegler. Kitely has taken so much damage. And if I were Briggs, I'd be licking my lips backstage watching this because Hayden has get, been getting the shit beat out of him. Oh, oh, oh! Fry, fry, fry! Pop up powerbomb! Can he do it? Will this be it? One, two!
down! Oh, Ziegler takes out referee Murphy in order to stop the pin from going down. Man, Ziegler playing that defense like a pro tonight. Northern Lights suplex by Porter gonna take out Ziegler. Meanwhile, Hayden, wrong time to taunt. Roll up! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Will Malcolm steal it? One, two, he will! The ATL! We have new Fusion Tag Team Champions! Hayden decided to taunt. Malcolm Fry with a roll up. Steals the win. The thief, the robbery of the century here at Sacrifice. The ATL dethroned Jacob Ziegler and Hayden, and we have new Fusion Tag Team Champions here tonight. And what kind of condition is Hayden going to be in, guys, later on tonight in the main event when he defends his world title against a fresh Andrew Briggs? Hayden might be leaving Toronto, Ontario with no titles, walks in with two. The ATL remain unbeaten and are now at the top of the mountain. Who's gonna topple these two? Atlanta taking over Toronto. Man, and in the hype, guys, of the ATL becoming the new Fusion Tag Team Champions, you could gloss over the fact that Malcolm Fry just pinned Hayden Kitely, the current world champion, one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time. What a win for the ATL, man. And now Hayden going to have to use this time to rest up the best that he can. Gotta wonder how Ziegler's feeling. He's gotta be feeling some type of way. Hayden costing them the tag team titles by taunting, deciding to turn his back on Malcolm Fry. But guys, still a lot to get to. This is our tertiary main event of the evening. After this, the Coleman event, the ultimate sacrifice match comes your way. Then, of course, in the main event, Andrew Briggs and Hayden for the world title. But first, it is a first to two falls count anywhere match. For the light heavyweight championship, that means the first superstar to gain two pinfalls will leave Toronto, Ontario here tonight as the light heavyweight champion. The odds obviously stacked against Ryan Kent, the champion, defending here in this scenario. Kent has fought through worse odds than this before, though. As here comes the former rising star champion, the Baller Bay Bay. Of course, from head to toe, rocking that gold. Chris Diamond says that that light heavyweight championship is as good as his. And I don't doubt a man, Diamond, without a you know, not, not, not even a question that he's been the most impressive superstar to come over to see him be from WGW. He's cocky, he's egotistical, but don't let that fool you. He is a very skilled competitor in that ring. 
Biggest match of Diamond's CMV career here, no doubt about it, in that ring with a with a you know, former Money in the Bank winner and, of course, a future Hall of Famer, the most decorated superstar in CMV history, and Ryan Kent. Diamond and Matt Devious, of course, last month at Validation, they were teammates, remember? They were part of Team King in that elimination tag match. But tonight, no friendships here. We might see partnerships form here and there, maybe. But I assure you, they will not last long as only one man can leave tonight as the light heavyweight champion. As here now comes the antagonist, the one and only villain, former Mr. Money in the Bank, and the deadly and the dastardly Matt Devious. Matt Devious, sorely, sorely, sorely underrated, I feel, by the CM Universe and everybody in the locker rooms. This kid is perhaps the top of the best on Monday Night Fusion and throughout all of CMV. And a deadly submission game to boot. Matt Devious looks ready to win his first championship in CMV. He was robbed out of the Money in the Bank briefcase by Jacob Ziegler and Shane Scott, but he has busted his ass to work his way back up the ladder and earn this opportunity here tonight. Of course, we have our challenges, but it's nothing without the champion. The, the fire starter, my friend. Ryan motherfucking Kent. We all know what this man managed to do with his first reign as light heavyweight champion. Shattered records for most defenses as a champion. Won that title by defeating Andrew Briggs back at validation. And although Kent feels as though the title is underneath him, he's not going to look to just lose it. His number one goal on his mind at all times, he even said it himself earlier this week on Fusion, is that world championship. Be interesting to see Briggs, you know, knock off Hayden later on tonight in our main event. Maybe Briggs becomes world champion. Maybe we get another chapter in the Kent Briggs saga. But tonight, Ken has to worry about the two men standing in front of him. Because they are nobody to look past. Ken brings the experience. Devious brings the dastardly deeds. And Chris Diamond brings his merch, Bay Bay. And this is first to two falls count anywhere. The superstar to gain two pinfalls or submissions will walk out as light heavyweight champion. And a fall can happen anywhere in the arena. There are no count outs. There are no disqualifications. Referee Murphy raises that title high up for all to see. Here we go. The baller, Chris Diamond. The antagonist, Matt Devious. The fire starter, Ryan Kent for the gold. Let's get it on. Ring that bell. Here we go. Devious immediately going to go for Diamond. As Kent says, yeah, this is a walk in the park. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. What am I even doing here? Matt Devious drilling. Diamond's head into the gift stop. <laughs> just flip it down. <laughs> now unloading the elbows to the thigh. Matt Devious does, uh, you know, from time to time, like to use some springboards, go off the top rope. So taking out his legs will remove those weapons from his arsenal. Ryan Ken through and through is a, a brawler, a hard hitter. Nice little... And Zaguri there by Chris in the corner and then a cartwheel moonsault. With those golden pants just glimmering in the spotlight. Irish whip rebounds this diamond out right into a chest bump. Good sportsmanship shown. Trip up though and unloading with the right hands. Looks like I can't really tell from this angle. 
if Diamond was able to defend those or not. Diamond already going to take a trip to the outside. Not a great start to things for him. As Ryan can't get a taste the canvas with that face smash. Now Devious rolling to the outside and Kent has the ring to himself. That's how you do it, baby. Matt Devious rushes the ring only to get caught with an Irish whip. Now, ooh, nice jumping back elbow. Here comes Diamond rejoining the fight. The baller going to kick Devious, making sure he stays down. Power bomb attempted but Kent with a couple of punches directly to the face. Going to make sure he doesn't get dropped down with the bomb. Oh, don't know what happened. Nah, I can't even almost tell you guys what that was. Ended in an enzulary, I can tell you that much. And then a terminating spike to Devious, and there he goes. Diamond now brought to his feet, only to be floored with a single knee face breaker. Vintage Kent already looking to score himself a point as he tucks the arms. And Diamond goes for a ride, not a fun one. Kent clash, unfortunately. Kent does not see Devious coming in from behind. Grasping at the temples. And Kent looks to be completely out of it, guys. Devious gonna try to steal his pin. No rope breaks, remember. One, two. No, only a two count. Too much time wasted. Diamond able to recuperate. But now Devious looks to keep his foot to the pedal. Up to the top rope, he climbs. Iris Golfin's gonna pay off with an elbow drop to the upper back. Now gonna go for another pin lateral press. One, just a one count this time. <clears throat> the light heavyweight champion back into it. Swing out single knee gut buster. Remember, it is false count anywhere, so if this fight gets taken to the outside, pinfall submission still 100% legal. Reverse DDT there, though, gonna drop the CMV veteran a shoe in for the Hall of Fame one day as Diamond. He's probably had the roughest go of it so far in this matchup. Looking to do a bit of recuperating. Devious says, nah, -uh, not on my watch. Forearm smash to the back of the head though. Wrong time to taunt. We just saw Hayden make that mistake. And the last match cost him the Fusion Tag Team titles. Crucifix power bomb set up by the antagonist. This could be very deadly, but Diamond with a great escape arm drag to see himself set free. Now Diamond has his sight set on Kent, but doesn't see that leg drop bulldog from behind. Kent gonna try to steal the pin and score a point, but Devious makes sure that that does not happen as Diamond once more gonna plop to the outside. Into the corner. The light heavyweight champion with an Irish strip. Opposite side of the ring, rushes him. Back elbow, then an, oh fuck, an enziguri of the CCS. To the top rope, this is something you do not see too often, so make sure you take a picture. Right, Ken about to fly high. Oh, beckoning for Devious to rise up to his seat. What the hell does he got in store here? Oh, a brain chop. Just bringing the knife edge right down on the top of the head, man. Here comes Chris Diamond wanting to get his hands on Ryan Kent. Devious laughing at the fact. Find something funny about it. Oh, Diamond trying for his TKO. But fucking Devious breaking it up. What a legend. As now he looks to pull Diamond's arm right out of its socket. But Kent from behind. What the fuck? I guess was trying for a back suplex. But Devious able to bring it down into a headlock instead. And now Devious. 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 Devious Deeds. The antagonist. With the. With the single arm. Crossface chicken wing. Oh, but Diamond breaking things up before Kent can submit if he was going to at all. Now Diamond brings the fight into the corner. The baller looks to finally have his chance in the sun here. Pressing his boot right up under Devious' jaw. He's got Devious up on the up on the ropes even. He's pushing him so hard. Good God. And a pinfall attempt. Kent, though, making the save, just throwing his entire body. Oh! Clothesline all the way from hell. Vintage Kent, one, two, no! Still no points scored. Now ah, there's Devious popping up over there. Backflipping out of that suplex attempt and catching Kent with a zigzag. 
Nice sequence there as Diamond goes to the top rope. Looking to sling that merch, baby. Shooting star press. Perfectly executed, but here comes Devious back into the ring. Lateral press by Matt here on Diamond. Once again, nearly getting the point. But Diamond able to survive as here comes Devious unloading with some punches right to the forehead of the baller as Kent takes some time to, to rest up in the corner. Now shoots out. Oh, what a close line. That was a bicycle close line. Into the lateral press in the middle of the ring. Murphy has to get that perfect position. One. Just a one count. You see Devious starting to move around a little bit. Starting to catch his bearings. Remember, Diamond, you're in Toronto. This is sacrifice with the light heavyweight title on the line. Going for her to the jaw instead. It's a face full of forearm. Diamond decides this is a, the perfect time to mock the CME universe. There goes Devious taken out. And this is a great opening for Diamond or Ken. Single on the hook, DDT. Maybe it'll be the baller who brings home the first point. Chris Diamond. Chris Diamond. Little bit of a cheeky spin. Dropped into the TKO. But here comes Devious before Diamond can even make it to the pin. Irish whip into the corner. Watch out, Murphy. Face to face, they stand. Diamond, though, just going to sucker him in. Ken is still out. Pressing the boot to the jaw, man. A second time here. Very proud of himself, basking in his own glory. Kent just got back to his seat. And Diamond's like, uh-uh. Into the corner. Look how tired both Diamond and Ken are. Devious using the ropes to get up to a vertical base. Jesus Christ, Diamond, this isn't an MMA match, man. Knees for days. Holy cow. Could have easily, oh, neck breaker out of nowhere. Rip Diamond, and here comes Kent. Pissed. Lutez press and just unload him with the right hands. One, only a one count. And Kent talks that trash. Saying these are the schmucks I'm defending my title against. Who the fuck is this guy? Close line from hell. Well, Kent, this guy is Matt Devious. And back and forth they go, tip for tat, but it is Ken who pulls off the single knee face breaker. Both men are down. Technically, Devious is in a pin right now, now he's not. Diamond using the apron to pull himself up. Slide him back into the ring and a stomp to the back of the head, but here comes Ken! Ryan Ken! Ryan Ken! Lumbar check! Into the pin! Will the champ score the first point? One! Two! Oh my god, he may have, and I think he was going to. But Devious with that save of the century. Chris Diamond and La La Land. Action roll there by Kent. Gets himself out of harm's way. Now up against the ropes, and that's not a place that Kent wants to be, but there goes Devious down to the outside. Eliminated with the Royal Rumble. Devious on the apron watching the action. That's a great strategy in a multi-man match. A strategy that I would have would have you know used. Just let my opponents beat the hell out of each other. Then when I see an opening, take it. Shinbreaker, Dragon Scooter combo. And Kent, I believe, for the first time, gonna be taken out. Selena Del Sol by Diamond looks to steal a pin here. Will it be enough? No, it is not. Just a two-count diamond without a doubt has taken the most damage in this matchup, but look at that, still well enough to uh, taunt. As now Diamond has the opening, Kent is still down on the outside. This is his chance to make the pin. There's the cheeky spin, TKO. Can he get to the pin in time? Kent is starting to get back up. Is there enough time? One, two, three, no, Woo! Mama Sita Guacamole. That was a close call. Diamond got to be miffed. Takes out Kent with a Dr. Teeth and another shooting star press, this time off the springboard. 
Diamond having a go of it, and now he looks to pin the champion. Broken up, and a count of one, though. Devious lining up. <laughs> what, did he, what did he even hit him with? I don't even know. Lateral press now by Devious as he digs his hand into Kent's face, mushing it into the map, but just a two count. Diamond in another dimension, staring up at the lights. An arm drag into another pin, man. Frequent pins in this matchup. Pin, pin, pin. Back and forth again and again. They want those points. We still haven't had one score. One of these three men's got to get to two points in order for this match to come to an end. And we have a champion crowned. Devious with a forearm smash now brings up back to the ring. Diamond gets up just in the nick of time as Devious going to lock in this cross face chicken wing again. Going to make the save. Yeah, there we go. Once more. Rescuing Ryan Kent, not to help out Kent himself, but to make sure that Kent does not score a point. Now it goes for the TKO a second time, but Devious counters into a reverse DDT. And Devious says, all right, you motherfucker. You're not gonna let me tap out Kent. I got you, fam. The antagonist with Kent still down and out of it. Cross face chicken wing, dastardly deeds. Dastardly deeds locked in. Will Devious score the first point? Will Diamond for us? Diamond taps and Devious scores a point. Devious just has to get one more point and he'll be the light heavyweight champion. One on the board for the antagonist. Now Diamond and Ken have to work overtime. Diamond looking around like what the hell just happened? Once more, he's chopped down to size. Oh, I thought he was gonna roll out of the ring, just rolling out of harm's way, I guess. And Diamond. <laughs> Fucking diamond, dude. Gets to his feet and taunts. Yeah, he just tapped out. What? Turns around to see a Ken clash that busts Devious wide open, but Ken did not see Diamond coming in from behind. Oh, it's Diamond. Oh! Dropped out of the torch rack into a double knee backbreaker. And look at Diamond, the slimy little rat. Gonna steal the pin. One, two. No, too much time, though. Diamond with a knee right to the bicep. So Ryan Kent just seated out there. Oh, Phoenix Splash, man. Diamond can surprise you with how athletic he is. If he wasn't such a cocky son of a bitch, I might be a huge fan. Ah, who am I kidding? I love me some Diamond merch. But wait a minute. Kent's still down. Kent's still down. He just got back up. Can he make the save in time? Dastardly Deeds again. Will Diamond tap out a second time? No, no new champion just yet. And now it looks like a oh, vertical suplex dropped into a reverse STO. Lateral press now by Devious, who's busted wide open. Blood dripping down his score. Hey, you know, Devious would love to pin Kent to win the title. This has not been a fun night. If your name is Chris Diamond, well, look at this, Devious. Oh, man, with the throat cut and then the backbreaker so deadly and it took it out of him now diamond they look to pounce on the opportunity diamond and ken have got to come back if devious scores one more fall he's the new champion kent and diamond still gonna get two more oh break your neck foundation by the baller but not enough time to celebrate caught with a single knee face breaker into the pin one, two, do Diamond says, uh-uh. Look at Chris just limping. Kent with the Kent clash, I believe, a second time to Diamond in this matchup. Look at Devious now, dawning that proverbial mask, and now Diamond busted open, but Kent turns right around. Devious, 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 Devious Deeds, Devious Deeds locked in on the champion. Will Kent tap? Will he have a new champion crown? Here at second, we will, we will. Devious does it. Matt Devious is the new light heavyweight champion. He did it. Two balls in a row. The antagonist is the new champion.
What a finish, man. Kent thought he had a point one as he hit the Kent Clash on Diamond, but turned around only to be caught in that cross face chicken wing dastardly deeds. And the fire starter is forced to submit. What a thrilling matchup. Absolutely nonstop action from start to finish. And Matt Devious has crowned our new light heavyweight champion. Deservedly so. Look at that. The face of a warrior drenched in blood. Congratulations to the antagonist. All right, combat, my man. Thanks for stopping by. We're glad to have you. Hope you enjoyed the show. And here we go, guys. It is co-main event time. Sacrifice truly comes to fruition here. And this match in a tweet from one of the competitors we're about to see. Miles Kelly says, showtime, lads. Go big or go home. And of course, this is a new match concocted by General Manager Johnny Sampson. Ultimate sacrifice. These four men trapped inside of a 16-foot tall black steel cage. No escape. The only way to win is by pinfall or submission. And every one of these guys has put something near and dear to them on the line in order to gain entry because the winner of this match will receive a world championship shot next month at Dark Carnival. Azriel, the boa, the movie star, sacrificing his hair. If he loses, he must shave bald. Miles Kelly, with perhaps the biggest at stake, putting on the line his entire career as a CMV superstar. If Miles Kelly does not win here, this is the last time we will ever see him in a CMV ring. Of course, Paul Devine putting on the line his fusion contract. Since his very first day in CMV, Devine has been a fusion superstar. That's where he's made his legacy, won his three world championships. But if he loses, he'll have to find a new home. And of course, Harvey Hastings, the assassin, sacrificing his United States title. All for just a chance, just a shot, just the opportunity to challenge for the world title next month at Dark Carnival. What an event this has been so far. And with still that main event to come, hopefully Hayden has been resting up as he defends that world championship against King of the Ring winner Andrew Briggs. What a big act. And there's the boa, big asshole, who two weeks ago on Fusion said, shit, man, I'm making out like a bandit in this matchup. I just have to sacrifice my hair? The only thing that I have to do is shave bald if I lose? Count me in. And truly, compared to all the other sacrifices in this matchup, it really is minuscule. Of course, Azrael, as a movie star, as an A-lister, his, his looks are very, very important to him. So having to shave bald might cost him some rolls, going to cost him some money. But for the chance to finally get a shot at the world title, Azrael's willing to do what he must. And a tweet, guys, from Matt Devious says, I am the future. I am the one that will initiate change, and I'm your new champion. The bad men have one title, and soon it will be two. Two it might be if Andrew Briggs can knock off Hayden in our main event. He's protecting the moneymaker, Zach, you know? The realist. 
<laughs> That's all right, Chrissy. You missed some great matches, but we're glad to have you back for the Coleman event. The ultimate sacrifice match. About to get underway, and there you see hanging above the ring that, that black 16-foot high steel cage, and there's no escaping it, guys. The only way to win this match is by pinfall or submission. These four superstars are going to be trapped close quarters. Hopefully none of them are claustrophobic. Man, apparently rumors have been running rampant that if Devon is to lose here, he'll, he'll retire, you know, instead of not being able to compete on Fusion anymore, he'll just retire altogether. But apparently earlier tonight, somebody asked him if they were true, and Devon simply said, kings never die. Oh, I won't recap them, Krizzy. You can stay and watch live. I don't have any reason to talk about the other matches. But here comes the man who has the most on the line in this matchup. The legit gentleman putting up for grabs his career, guys. All for the chance to, to get a, a shot at glory, to challenge for that world title. Miles Kelly said it himself earlier in that tweet. Go big or go home. The longest reigning rising star champion of all time is ready to do what he has to, even if it costs him his livelihood. Three of these men are going to have to change their lives indefinitely. Only one guy is going to walk out of Toronto, Ontario with his sacrifice returned to him with the United States Championship and with a shot at the world title next month at Dark Carnival. Is now here comes the man who puts the rising and rising sun, Japan's biggest export, baby. The one, the only three-time world champion and willing to do what he has to to get it back again. Paul D. Vine has made his home on Monday Night Fusion, but if he loses this match, he will never be allowed back on the flagship show again. He'll have to find himself a new home. Paul Devine in front of the CMB Universe might be making his final appearance as a fusion superstar. <laughs> Echo, you know that Zach Falcon in chat there, Zach Payne, right? <laughs> He's back, baby. Echo and Zach reunited. And last but not least, the assassin double H himself, Harvey Hastings, who puts on the line his CMV United States Championship, a title that is very near and dear to him, what he would have you call the German Championship. As he says, he'll bring CMV into a new Reich when he be wins this matchup and then becomes world champion. Of course, former special forces in the German military. Harvey Hastings is deadly with his striking, especially his kicks. Also a high flyer. He could look to finish this match off multiple ways. Blitzkrieg off the top rope, or maybe that deadly anaconda vice of his. This is our co-main event of the evening. Toronto, Ontario, Ben, what a hell of a host for the first annual sacrifice. But it is far from over. As in just a few moments, that cage will lower down and enclose these four men inside of its walls. No escape. Only win by pinfall or submission. Who is going to keep their sacrifice? And who is going to Dark Carnival next month? World Championship.
a career could end. A life that's been built up here on Fusion could be no more. And a championship could be lost as here we go. The cage is lowered. Azriel, Miles Kelly, Paul Devine, Harvey Hastings. Let's get it on. The bell rings. Miles Kelly going right after Hastings. They have a history with each other. While Devine goes after the BOA, the two-time international champion and former tag team champion. Hastings with a nice Hurricane Rana there. The legit gentleman is Azriel with a back suplex to Devine. Again, you can see on this cage, there's no door. Of course, you know, in most steel cage matches, you'd, you know, you'd see they'd, they'd escape by climbing up and over. You could do that here, but no, there's no escape. You cannot win that way in this matchup. Only by a pin or a submission. And that's gonna be tough to get in such an enclosed space with three other guys. Face to face, Miles Kelly after taking out Harvey Hastings' knees. Gonna catch him with that little twisting Scoop slam breaking up the uh, submission that Devon had locked in on Azriel. Miles Kelly fighting for his life really here, guys. Oh man, how about a power bomb lung blower? That's one way to get things started. Harvey Hastings now going at it with the realist. Miles Kelly playing great defense, breaking up everything left and right. Russian leg sweep, Hastings taking on the vine. Hastings holding a victory over the Asian sensation a couple weeks ago on Fusion. As Azriel's coming off a win just uh, earlier this week, man, he put down newcomer Bryce Canyon in under 30 seconds. Azriel's definitely looking very good coming into this matchup. Devine's been suffering a slew of losses lately. Of course, at validation, his team lost to Team King, and it was actually Hastings who pinned Devine in that matchup as well. So you know Devine would love to avenge those losses by pinning the assassin here. Azrael, Miles Kelly, and Paul Devine have never held that United States Championship before. Of course, Devine is the only man of these four to be a former world champion to know what it's like to be at the top of the mountain, to be the man. As the current United States Champion with a nice Spanish fly, that takes athleticism. Incredible skill, has now to the top row, thought maybe he was gonna go for Blitzkrieg instead. Miles Kelly just tracks Azrael's spine over his knees, and Hastings with that agility once more, being showcased, Hurricane Rana, Air Raid Sire, neck breaker. Harvey Hastings now, ooh, broken up. Now the winner of the matchup becomes United States Champion. So the winner will keep their sacrifice, become United States champion, and get the future world title. So of course, if Hastings wins, he just retains the uh, title. But we know that whomever does win this matchup, guys, on the Fallout Fusion on Tuesday, will have to defend against Matseo Yum, who cashed in the Rising Star title to get that opportunity. Misses that drop to Devon as Azriel up to the second turnbuckle, beckoning for the legit gentleman to get up to his feet. What is the Boa thinking here? Ooh, mini phenomenal forearm. Of course, Azriel can't really do the actual phenomenal forearm that he likes to uh, frequently utilize because the cage pressed up against the uh, walls. Now Hastings looking to pull off maybe a headshot, but Devine beginning to know Har Harvey too well. There are multiple encounters with each other. And Miles with a beautiful drop kick off the second turnbuckle. Standing shooting star press by the United States champion. And a second time, why not? Two for the price of one. Hey, what up, Sam? It has been a while, my friend. Welcome back. Glad to have you here at Sacrifice as Harvey with that Northern Lights into the bridge. Azrael saw it out of the corner of his eye. Now taking out the champ with a neck breaker. That would be interesting to see, but more, you can't really stand on the top of this cage. It's thin walls. Uh, you have to have incredible balance to stand on top of this cage, which Harvey might have. Oh, future shock DDT. And Miles Kelly's future might very well be shocked if he loses this matchup. He'll be out on his ass without a job. Catchphrase by Paul Devine, the maneuver he utilized to win his first ever world championship way back when last year at uh, Requiem that was. 
Paul Devine pandering to his sea of fans. No doubt he has the most fan support out of these four superstars. Oh, Devine, wait a minute, Asriel! Asriel has the boa constrictor since then. Harvey escapes, but at the same time, Devine with Divine intervention to Kelly. Into the pin, Hastings doesn't see it. DDT to Asriel, one, two, three! Divine, Divine! The Asian sensation! Keeps his job on Fusion, becomes United States Champion, and next month has the chance to become a four-time World Champion. As now it sinks in that Miles Kelly's career is over. Asriel gonna have to shave bald, and Hastings no longer the United States Champion. Holy shit. Divine took a big step forward in sacrificing his fusion contract, but it pays off. Adds another title to his resume. He has to put that on the line on the next fusion against Maseo Yume. But you know what Devon's thinking of. In one month's time, four weeks, he'll challenge either Andrew Briggs or Hayden for the world championship. We find out up next in our main event exactly who it will be. But Devon, baby, the Asian sensation. Japan's biggest export does it. Sad to see Miles Kelly's career come to an end. He was a great competitor, loved by many. Had a bright future, but he did what he had to. He said, go big or go home. Unfortunately, he's going home. I'm sure Devine gonna rip those German flags right off as soon as he gets to the back. And as Hastings storms his way into the back, he lets out a tweet here saying, Bullshit, I want my rematch clause signed right now. But Matteo Yum is going to be challenging Divine next. I guess if Yum wins, I guess Hastings would challenge whomever is the winner of that. But man, Divine against all odds. What an incredible victory for the Asian sensation staying home on Monday Night Fusion. But now, guys, it all comes down to this. The first annual sacrifice live from Toronto, Ontario. And the undisputed championship is about to be decided. We now know that time at the next time Fusion comes to pay-per-view, Dark Carnival, the third annual Dark Carnival. And a tweet, guys, from Bob Luger says, Let's go, Briggs. Destroy this imp. Hashtag click rules. And, of course, click telling Briggs that if he wins here, if he becomes world champion, they will induct him into click, of course, to join his sister, Amber. Andrew Briggs shattered that glass ceiling three weeks ago at the King of the Ring special, outlasting seven other skilled competitors beating Ryan Kent in the finals to earn this opportunity. The three-time record-setting light heavyweight champion now looks for the biggest win of his career. The biggest matchup of Andrew Briggs' career and he's got 
a big, big, big <clears throat> advantage heading into this as well. Because Hayden, guys, earlier tonight, remember, in defending the Fusion Tag Team titles uh, with Jacob Ziegler against ATL, lost them. And it wasn't a quick match, man. ATL, well, excuse my language, but they beat the fuck out of Hayden. Hopefully he's passed, you know, 40 minutes or so resting up the, the most that he can. Hayden walked into Toronto with two titles. Is he going to walk out with only one or maybe neither? Nothing. We're about to find out as the A-lister on his own level captured that championship about eight weeks ago, defeating Voice Vindy, retained it at validation against Bison, forcing the Beast to tap out. And Briggs is coming into this one off a, a stinging loss to Bison earlier this week on Fusion. Not a whole lot of momentum backing up Briggs, but of course Hayden just lost tonight, so the same can be said about him. Divine did hellish. Poe Divine. Hayden Kiley, we know. But if you don't know, he'll tell you. He thinks he's the best to ever do it. He's got one hell of an argument to back him up. Four-time world champion, first ever undisputed champion, the first ever double-double champion, two-time tag team champion, Royal Rumble winner, King of the Ring winner. Hayden's done it nearly all, but this is a first-time encounter, and Kitely, I say all the time, he's got an ego the size enough to take up the arena, but do not underestimate Andrew Briggs. Especially this season's Andrew Briggs. The best condition I've ever seen him in. Briggs has been tearing through the Fusion roster. And now is in the biggest match of his life. The fifth annual CMB King of the Ring winner. With Click backing him up and cheering him on. And the fans seem to be behind him too. Briggs is ready, baby. This is his moment. As there he stands on a pedestal of his own making. The CMB undisputed champion. Hoisting his prize high up in the air. Now that Briggs saying, you want it, kid? You come and take it off of me. Hands it off to referee Murphy. Andrew Briggs shown the gold. He nods his head. He knows what's on the line. He's waited for this. He's worked for this. For all to see, the title is shown. Paul Devine awaits the winner in four weeks' time at Dark Carnival. Andrew Briggs, Hayden, one-on-one -on -one in the main event of sacrifice for the grandest prize of them all. Referee rings the bell, and here we go. These are two men right here who proved all the stereotypes wrong. They're smaller. They're not exactly jacked to the gills. These two, I mean, Hayden's a cruiserweight for crying out loud. But look at them. They're in the main event of a CMB pip. You fight for the world title, baby. Look at that athleticism by Briggs right there. Feeling each other out early on. Now a snap suplex to send it back to Hayden. Briggs brings Hayden up so that they stand face to face, toe to toe, fist to fist. Coming up from behind, rushing leg sweep, simple but effective. Starting things off slow are these two. No high impact offense. They don't want to rush into things, especially Hayden. Not at 100%. Snap Marin elbow to the top of the head. Andrew Briggs got to be looking out at all times for that Hollywood hold. The single most deadly submission maneuver in CMB history, perhaps the wrestling world period. A look at Hayden. Shoulder thrust to the gut, sends Briggs tumble down to the outside, and Hayden with a look on his face, almost saying, you don't belong in the ring with me, boy. Propped up, though, at an arm drag. 
Hayden does have the champion's advantage. He can retain on a count out or disqualification. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised at Hayden taking the cheap way like that. Of course, Andrews would say it's a legit way to win. That What a fucking punch right there that was by Hayden, though. Count of oh, super kick. Briggs knows full well, though. He cannot win the title that way. He wants to get this fight back in the ring as soon as possible. We're at a count of seven right now. Oh, my God. Do not let this out. No. Come on. Count of nine. No, no, no. Get out of here. No. It can't end that way. It can't end that way. Look at the look on Hayden's face. The smirk smug. Kylie retaining his title via a count out. What a coward. What a coward. In the main event of a pay-per-view. Hayden. Dirty, slimy. Cheating to win. Well, not cheating, but come on. Andrew Briggs, the biggest match of his career, just got the opportunity stolen from him. Get the hell out of here. And just look at Hayden's face, man. Look at the look of pleasure. How proud he is of himself. How happy he is. Grinning from ear to ear. And that is just trash. I'm sorry, I'm full straight on bias, but get the hell out of here. This is, this is just ridiculous. God damn it. A man of that with so much hype around it and hating. Just the, oh man, I can't even talk about it. Toronto, Ontario. Witness one a hell of a pay-per-view, but it comes to an end. With Hayden retaining the world championship by count out. All the work that Briggs went through to earn this shot down the drain. I guess Hayden did what he had to do. He knew he wasn't at 100%. He knew he had to use his champion's advantage because he couldn't beat Briggs. Oh, I'm, I'm miffed over here. I'm pissed off. I'm about to get up and go beat Hayden's ass. We got to stop this now before I do. The Toronto screw job. God damn it, Hayden. Well, ladies and gentlemen, sad to see it end or taste in the mouth. But what a show. We actually had a tweet here from Divine I wanted to read. I missed it, though. Right here, Divine says, I'm not ducking leaving. The show goes on. This is my home. They're going to need a fucking wrecking ball to take me out of here. They're going to need to send the National Guard, the SWAT team, because I ain't going nowhere. Staying home. Hashtag fusion. And I guess, guys, that now it's set. Next month at Dark Carnival, it'll be Paul Devine challenging Hayden for the world title. But goddamn, Andrew Briggs deserved better than that. He deserves another shot at the championship. And I hope to God that Johnny Sampson gives it to him because that was trash. That was bullshit. Oh, man, but what are you going to do? It happens. Hayden knew that he had to take that route. I guess at the end of the day, you got to call him smart in a way. But thanks for joining me, guys. If you make sure you do, drop a follow so that you know when I go live. The next time, of course, will be on Tuesday for a few That's my voice. We're going to find out what's happening. What's, what's the fallout going to be? What's the situation going to be? But, oh, man. Of course, exclamation point join. If you would like a call on the show, you are more than welcome. My bad. Botch that exclamation point join. Not two exclamation points. Uh, that's a link to our website, cmbwrestling.com. If you have a call and you want to feature it on one of our many shows, you are absolutely more than welcome. Uh, exclamation point CMV. We'll know a little bit more about us if you're interested at all. Uh, official CMV. Underscores our Twitter if you like to follow us for signings, updates, match cards, postings, all that kind of stuff. And guys, thank you for joining me, even though we had a sour ending. 
Hayden has to ruin the day. Absolutely great pay-per-view from start to finish. I enjoyed it. Thank you for watching with me. And I will see you next time.